Hey guys, how y'all doing? I just want to warn you, this video is not one of my best. Um, matter of fact, I think it it could be marketed as a cure for insomnia, probably. <laughs> but best watch late at night when you're trying to fall asleep. It'll it'll help you a lot. But anyway, um, I'll try to get something good up there sometime. But this this is a filler. That's all it is is a filler. So if you don't want to watch a filler, we'll skip to another. Anyhow, no, it ain't, it ain't that bad, but um, haven't put one up in a while, and I would like to put up a blockbuster, but this ain't it. But it's coming. I'm getting stuff together. Anyhow, try to enjoy this one if it's possible. Catch you later. See ya. Hey, how y'all doing? I'm down here where I normally do the Calhoun County thing. Had a fellow, he was requesting some more Calhoun County stories. But I gotta wait for Charlie to come up with some more. For those of you who don't normally watch Calhoun County, you're missing out on it. It's uh, it's not me dressed up and talking silly, making up jokes. It's uh, actually telling true stories about a uh, local guy in the area. His first name is Charlie, but his last name is not Calhoun, but I, I didn't want to give his real name. But there are true stories and things that actually happen. Uh, some of them are hard to believe, but that's, truth is stranger than fact, is what they say. Something like that. Anyhow, it's a, but I'm not going to do a Calhoun County right now. Uh, kind of waiting for Charlie to finish up his latest uh, escapade, let's say. Um, find out if he ends up in prison or not. <laughs> it's a shame. But uh, uh, anyway, I just was uh, going to tell you a couple things. Uh, some remembrances living here on the farm. When we grew up, we didn't have a whole lot of money. Uh, we never thought we was poor. Looking back on it, I can see we were not uh, exactly rolling in the dough. We never lacked for anything. We grew our own food and uh, <clears throat> had a big garden. I remember Dad out there, he plowed a garden with the old workhorse in the spring. But, uh, we didn't use the horses anymore, but they always really enjoyed uh, bringing them out for plowing the garden. It was about an acre, and uh, still remember him doing that. Had two big Percheron workhorses, Nancy and Belle. And, uh, uh, many moons ago, little Indian lingo there. Um, anyway, there's a lot of fun things went on. I just happened to think today. Uh, there was a fella across the road, how he ended up at that farm over there. He was a plastic surgeon. He uh, he did uh, was not in the same uh, financial strata as us. He, he had a nice big old house over there. And, and in the fall, he'd have a, a big sugar corn roast. They'd roast some ears and have barbecue and stuff. We was, he was, like I say, he was a plastic surgeon. A lot of people he knew were doctors and stuff. And he invited them from the city out to his country estate. It was about 600 acres. It was actually a working farm. He had people running the farm for him. And uh, he'd invite us over there once in a while. We would go over. He had a big pond on there, and when we were planting tobacco, we'd go over there and siphon water out of his pond and fill up this big 500-gallon tank that we rolled up onto one of our wagons, have an old John Deere wagon, and chain her down. And we'd go over there and fill it up and, and use that to fill up the tanks on the side of Pop and Johnny when we were planting tobacco. But anyway, we got to know him some, and he invited us over there to a couple of them corn roasts and uh, dad he had a very dry sense of humor he uh, decided just for fun on the spur of the moment somebody he got in a conversation with someone he happened to have been one of the doctor's friends from the city and uh, asked dad what he did dad told him he was a doctor he's an endocrinologist and I was very impressed dad was, dad was just kidding but the guy took him seriously, and so he had to carry it on a minute or two. And he was he was doing pretty good uh, up until the point the guy asked him, uh, 
what exactly does an endocrinologist do? Dad said, well, I reckon you could say I, I just look at a lot of people's endos. So, <laughs> kind of fell apart there. <laughs> but uh, we all had a good laugh about that. Anyway, <clears throat> back then, when I was coming along, we had to pinch pennies. We weren't making a whole lot. And, uh, matter of fact, I got a good laugh a couple of years ago. This one fellow we know, he <laughs> he was dealing with a a dealer up the road. I don't know, he's about an hour away from us almost. They deal with all kinds of farm equipment. Not They're not a major dealer. They kind of dealt with New Holland stuff, but not the tractors so much. I guess, I guess you could buy a tractor from them, but mostly the haying equipment and that kind of thing. And... Uh, this fellow was up there, and that, somehow my name came up. And the guy looked at him and said, "That's the, that's the cheapest man I know, or something like that. Stingiest, or I forget what term he used, but I guess, pennies pinching this guy. <laughs> I just laughed because uh, I'm not a miser because I'm in love with money. We're very thrifty, shall we say, because we didn't have, uh, put it this way, we were not encumbered by an excess amount of disposable income. We had to watch where every dollar went. We worked very, very hard for every dollar, and I was very particular about how I spent it. <laughs> and if people think I'm stingy, well then I'm sorry. That's the reason. We just didn't have much, and uh, still don't. I never really learned the fine art of making money. Uh, it's not one of my talents. I have a few talents. Making money is not one of them. Uh, but the good Lord has always looked over us and made sure we had plenty. He's blessed me in lots of different ways. Um, matter of fact, when we were coming along, we, <laughs> just to give you an idea of some of the things we did instead of using straw for bedding, well, let me back up a little bit. We were driving around and we would see these people raking leaves and putting them in plastic garbage bags out for the county to come and pick up. We had new houses being built around us and that, well, down the road a ways for a while. And they were putting them out there and the county would come around and pick up them uh, bags full of leaves and uh, take them away. And we got to thinking, if, if we were to go around and get them, pick up them bags of leaves, dump them out in the hay barn for bidding, we wouldn't have to use any straw and we could sell the straw, all of it, instead of, instead of wasting it, using it for bidding in the barn. So that's what we'd do. We would go around to these different housing developments and pick up these bagfuls of leaves and come home and dump them out and use that for bedding instead of straw. And also, we never had to buy a trash bag. <laughs> this is how cheap we were. We would neatly fold those bags up and put them in a little box and we'd have them, we would use them for trash bags year round. <laughs> for setting, Cause we finally figured out that some of our money for property taxes was going for trash pickup. We didn't know that. Well, it wasn't for a long time. I mean, usually taking care of our trash, we'd carry out a bag of trash and put it in the smokehouse until it got full, and then we'd back up our dump trail to it, throw all the stuff in the back of the dump trailer and go out with a ditch down there, a big gully down in the cow field by the stream. We'd just dump it all in there, <laughs> and that's where it was. And we finally found out that they, uh, some of our tax money is going for trash pickup, so then we started putting it up there. Uh, didn't take us long to realize we had to actually put it in a bag. Couldn't just leave a pile up there. But uh, we started doing that. Just stuff like that we had to do because it was just, you know, watching every penny. And uh, we've got, as you can see, we got as much wear as we can out of out of clothes. I would wear them until there was my jackets until 
they just couldn't possibly be used as a jacket anymore. The sleeves would be half coming off, and <laughs> I don't know. It was terrible. Because we didn't have no other jobs. We just made our income from the farm. And on the farm, we got paid once a year when we sold the crop. We were growing tobacco, and that's when you got paid. I would hear people complain that they, I didn't get no raise this year. I said, well, shoot, man. Or they were complaining that they only got a 3% raise or something like that. And I was thinking to myself, man, you know what you're going to get next year. You know you're going to get something. You know where it's going to be, and you know that it's going up. You're getting more than you had last year. What in the world are you complaining about? We didn't have no idea what we were going to get, how much we'd have. We'd get to pay that one time when we sold the tobacco, and that's what you had to go on all year long. You had to stretch it out and wonder what you got. So um, a lot of the other farmers around here had jobs. How in the world they had time to have a job? And farm, I never could understand. We just never had enough time for that. Uh, it was tough. I mean, we we would typically make, we would gross about $24,000 on our farm. And our expenses would be $18,000. So, that means we made a profit of $6,000 on our farm. And it gets better. 3000 would go to Dad and 3000 would go to me. So each of us would have made, working an entire year, hard physical labor, 3000 bucks for the whole year. That's what we would make. And yet we were doing fine. We were doing fine. We weren't hurting. At the time I was pulling with uh, the spirit of deer power and buckshot, I was making under $5,000 a year, and that's a fact. And I never made over $10,000 a year till I was in my 30s. And uh, people around here were making six figures. I um, was hoping to make five, you know. So <laughs> I was making four a lot of times. But... Uh, we had a lot of fun on the farm, really enjoyed it. Wouldn't have changed anything. It kept me in good shape. I have been fine physical condition for as young as I am. Uh, I refuse to say old. I don't feel old, don't think old. Um, you look at me, you might say, boy, you look old. You look real old. But uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a mindset. I remember my daughter was telling one of her friends that I had a YouTube channel and was doing that kind of stuff. And my daughter was telling me her reaction was, wow, at his age, he's doing all that? And my first thought, just to tell you how different my mind works, how I have a young mindset, the first thing that ran through my mind was, does she think I'm too young to be able to do that? And that's the truth. And that's a good thing, to not think of yourself as being old, but to think, wonder, did somebody think I was too young to have learned all this stuff by now? Uh, we have long lifespans in our family. Old age runs in our family. We don't think anybody is old until they're 90 or so. In their 80s, they're still working, you know, so we just keep on going. When Dad was in his 70s, he was still climbing up in the barn hanging tobacco. And uh, my grandfather lived to be 98. He died of bad knees. <laughs> he just uh, he would have still been alive if his knees hadn't gone bad on him he he had he lived all by himself in an upstairs apartment and he couldn't take to going up and down the stairs anymore and he always said if he couldn't live alone he just wasn't going to live so he uh, when he had to give up that apartment and go live with one of his daughters and her husband he just said well I'm done and he let himself fade away, which is a shame, but uh, that's pretty much what he did. Um, we missed him. And my grandfather was born two centuries ago. He wasn't born in the 1900s. He wasn't born in the 2000s, obviously. He wasn't born in the 1900s. He was born in the 1800s. 
He was born in 1883. My grandfather. Not my great-great-grandfather. My grandfather. He was born in 1883. And uh, I guess he was 40 when my dad was born. And my dad was 40 when I was born. So we had pretty long spans of generations. <laughs> uh, that's good to have a young mindset. It helps you helps you stay young. I still think I'm 25. Then, then I put my glasses on, look in the mirror to shave, and I say, "Man, but uh, ain't doing too bad." You ought to see me without my shirt. No, I'm, I'm much too modest for that. Um, then there did come a time where I actually got a part-time job. Didn't didn't want one. Didn't look for it, but. There's a real great family around here. Uh, I won't mention the name, they know who they are. One of them's watching. Maybe two of them's watching. And uh, this family owned a uh, local gas station and repair shop called Automotive Repair. And uh, the owner, Johnny, had heard that I was some kind of halfway mechanic and he needed some help and they asked me to come down there and work for him. The first two or three weeks, I broke up more stuff than you can shake a stick at. When you go from working on cast iron tractors to working on automobiles, you can break up some stuff. But it was the weirdest thing I experienced getting a paycheck. I remember the first one, I worked part time for him, just part time. Man, give me a check for $250 on Friday afternoon. And I can remember looking at that thing, going home and thinking to myself, this is just the oddest thing in the world. I can, I can take that and I can spend every cent of it, the whole thing. And next Friday, I'll be standing right here holding a check again for $250. It just was mind-boggling to me. Getting paid regular. Of course, you all think that sounds crazy if you got a regular job. But when you're used to getting money coming in once a year and you don't even know how much you're going to get or if you're going to get any money, and then you go from that to... Somebody hand you a check every Friday. It's just a very odd sensation. I can still remember it today. <laughs> Spend every cent of it. And the next week I'll be standing right there with the check in my hand again. I know it sounds crazy, but that's... When you grow up on a farm, <laughs> never having a job, and experience that, it's just, it's different. But that didn't last real long. Got busy. Dad was slowing down. I was getting busier on the farm, so I had to lay that aside. Had somebody tell me they really like my set that I had built for doing the Calhoun County thing. But this, I got news for you. This is this is a corner of my cellar. Ain't no set. This big galvanized tank here it's about a hundred gallon tank that is actually my oh shoot this is my water tank from my house that we actually use and that's a fact <laughs> and some of these doors back here they uh when i remodeled or just brought some of the doors down set them in the corner this is this is the corner of part of my cellar and some of these, these things these are actual stuff that was Sitting on the sitting on shelves, been sitting there for 70, 80 years. <laughs> Down the cellar. It's the truth. I wouldn't lie to you. I might stretch it a little bit, but I ain't lying. So anyhow, I didn't have to work very hard to set up this little uh set. This here's this here's a one of them wood fields, uh oyster. Tins that the people are so crazy about some parts of the world. Yep. It's got lots of nice patina on it. I'm particularly uh, proud of this one. Anyway, and uh, just thought maybe you'd be interested in that. Yep. This here is a, a nine mighty fine railroad lantern. Yep. Sitting down here. Anyway. Hokey dokey, artichokey, catch you later.